Uh, just one thing. In his deposition, Mr. Pettit told the committee that he had a conversation with you in 1999 or 2000 in which you admitted that you used human growth hormones. Is this true? It is not. So you did not tell Mr. Pettit that you used human growth hormones? I did not. Mr. Clements, do you think Mr. Pettit was lying when he told the committee that you admitted using human growth hormones? Mr. Congressman, uh, Andy Pettit is my friend. He will be my, he was my friend before this. He will be my friend after this. And again, I think Andy has misheard. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I believe Andy has misheard, Mr. Congressman, uh, on his comments about myself using HGH, which never happened. The conversation that I can recall that I had with Andy Pettit was at my house in Houston while we were working out, and I t expressed to him about a TV show, something that I've heard about three older men that were using HGH and getting back their quality of life from that. Those are the conversations that I can remember. This one was so important, we went back to Mr. Pettit a third time. A third time. We asked him to submit an affidavit to the committee. This gave him a chance to express his recollection clearly without the pressures of a deposition. I want to read to you what he wrote. It says in 1999 or 2000, I had a conversation with Roger Clemens in which Roger told me that he had taken human growth hormones. This conversation occurred at his gym in Memorial, Texas. He did not tell me where he got the HGH or from whom, but he did tell me that it helped the body recover. It is not just Mr. Pettit who recollects this conversation. During his deposition, Mr. Pettit told us that he tells his wife everything. So we asked his wife to give us an affidavit about what she knew. And understand, this is under oath. Let me read to you what his wife said in her affidavit. I, Laura Pettit, do depose and state in 1999 or 2000, Andy told me he had had a conversation with Roger Clemens in which Roger admitted to him using human growth hormones. Mr. Clemens, once again, I remind you, you're under oath. You have said your conversation with Mr. Pettit never happened. If that was true, why would Laura Pettit remember Andy telling her about the conversation? Once again, Mr. Congress, I think he misremembers the, the conversation that we had. Uh, Andy and I's relationship was close enough to know that if I would have known that he was, had done HGH, which I now know, that he would, if he was knowingly knowing that I had uh, taken HGH, we would have talked about the subject. He would have come to me to ask me about the effects of it. Well, the fact is, Mr. Mr. Clemens, that apparently now you know he knew it and he didn't tell you. Has your, has your mind changed about his credibility? Uh, Andy's a, a fine gentleman. I, I have no reason, again, uh, very well. I think he misremembers. Very well. He also remembers a, a second conversation very clearly. This conversation took place in 2005. Let me read to you what he wrote about this conversation in his affidavit. In 2000, and I quote, in 2005, around the time of the congressional hearings into the use of performance enhancing drugs in baseball, I had a conversation with Roger Clemens in Kissimmee, Florida. I asked him what he would say if asked by reporters if, if, if he had ever used performance enhancing drugs. When he asked what I meant, I reminded him that he had told me that he had used HGH. Roger responded by telling me that I must have misunderstood him. He claimed that it was his wife, Debbie, who used HGH. And I said, okay, or words to that effect, not because I agreed with him, but because I wasn't going to argue with him. This conversation happened just three years ago and it is a kind of conversation that most people would remember. It is hard for me to imagine that Mr. Pettit made up this conversation. Did you, 
have a conversation with him to this effect? I don't believe I had a conversation in 2005 with him in Kissimmee, Florida. We'd have been with the Houston Astros at the time. Um, but I don't remember that conversation whatsoever. These aren't the only relevant conversations that Mr. Pettit told us about. He told us that after his first conversation with you, Mr. Clemens, he spoke with Mr. McNamee. Let me read what you, what, 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 let me read to you again that affidavit. And I quote, shortly after my conversation with, with Roger, I spoke with Brian McNamee. Only he and I were parties to the conversation. I asked Roger about HGH and told him that Roger said he had used it. Brian McNamee became angry. He told me that Roger should not have told me about his use of HGH because it was supposed to be confidential. Mr. McNamee, do you remember that conversation? Yes, sir. Did it happen? Yes, sir. Mr. Cummings, uh, your time has expired. Thank you very much.